Welcome to the Canadian edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 55 years of ministry. We believe in the gospel message that Mr. Womack preaches, and we believe in his ministry. And furthermore, we believe in the, the level of integrity that they operate with financially. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm into my fifth week of teaching on a subject that I've entitled Spirit, Soul, and Body. This coming Friday will be my last day to offer these materials, and I'm offering this book. It's a 160-page book, and it is free of charge. No strings attached. We'll send it to you. You can go to our website, and you can actually get all of this stuff, and, and uh, this coming Friday will be my last day to advertise that. I've already covered so much material, there's no way I can go back through everything, but just to try and summarize, it's our spirit that got born again, not our soul and not our body. And our spirit is not obvious to us. You can't see it, you can't feel it, you can't contact it any way except through the Word of God. And the Word of God teaches that this Spirit is now as perfect and complete as Jesus is, that it's as righteous as Jesus is. Jesus said we had to worship Him in spirit and in truth, that part that is changed. And the problem in most people's life is that they are approaching God in the flesh based on what their actions are, what their thought life is, and they come before God feeling condemned and unworthy but the truth is, when you make Jesus your Lord, you get born again, righteous and truly holy, Ephesians 4, 24. And you now, if you approach Him in spirit, you can stand before God holy and pure without any sin, because in your spirit, you are as complete and pure as Jesus is. Boy, those are radical, radical statements. And yesterday, I started dealing with Romans chapter 6, where it says, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He had just made grace. He had, he had preached it so strong that anybody who was paying attention would have to admit that we're forgiven of all of our sin. And I've even shared from Hebrews chapter 9 and chapter 10 that we're forgiven of all sin, past, present, and even sins that we haven't committed yet. I know people are thinking, that's heresy. That's what Hebrews chapter 9 and chapter 10 say. Specifically, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10, you're sanctified through the offering of Jesus Christ once for all. And verse 14 says, if you've been sanctified, you've also been perfected forever. And then Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23 says, it's the spirits of just men that has been made perfect. And so anyway, I hadn't got time to go back through all of that, but your spirit is perfect. But one of the things that hinders the application of this, people think, well, yeah, I've got this born-again spirit, but I've also got this old sinful nature that's on the inside of me. I was actually brought up, this was taught in the church that I grew up in. It's like we got two dogs on the inside of us that are just constantly battling back and forth, the new man and the old man, and they're constantly fighting, and whichever one we feed the most wins. But they were teaching that we're schizophrenic, that we have two natures, that we have a sinful nature and a born-again nature, and that we're just constantly back and forth. Did you know by most people's experience, it looks that way because there are times that we will turn around and forgive somebody who's done something, and then the next time something ticks us off and we operate just completely opposite. And so some people think, well, yes, I'm schizophrenic. I've got a dual nature on the inside of me. That is not what Romans is teaching. So again, let me go through some of these verses. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You are dead to sin. Some people think, well, I'm not dead to sin. Your born-again spirit is. Your body and your soul are still capable of sin, but your spirit cannot sin. I used that verse out of 1 John chapter 3, verse 9 yesterday to say that whatever is born of God cannot sin. Your spirit is incapable of sin, your born-again spirit. In verse 3, it says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death. 
Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Notice the first part of that verse, we are baptized into his death. That's a done deal. And we should walk in newness of life. The death to sin is automatic when you get born again. Your spirit cannot sin, but whether you reflect this resurrection life that is in your spirit, that's what should happen, but it's not automatic. It repeats that same thing in the next verse, verse 5. It says, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this. Notice again in verse 5, We have been planted together in the likeness of his death, and we shall be with the likeness of his resurrection in verse 6, knowing this. You have to know something. If you don't understand this, if you still think that there's a part of you that is part devil, <laughs> that part, part of your nature is just demonic, if you think that, you'll eventually act it out. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. But if you can see that, no, I am changed. I'm a new creature then you will start manifesting that new life through you as you focus on it, as you know this. And so look at this in verse 6. You have to know this, that our old man is crucified with him. It's not something that has yet to happen. It happened at salvation. You were, you were baptized into his death. You died to that old sin nature. That sin nature is gone. So you have to know that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. And the result of that will be that henceforth we should not serve sin. But notice it says that the old man is crucified, but now you've got a body of sin that has to be destroyed. What is this talking about? According to James chapter 2 and verse 26, it says, As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So when a person physically dies, their spirit and soul leaves their body. But did you know, and that's what constitutes death. When the spirit and soul are gone, that person is dead, but they leave behind a body. And for a period of time, that body can look like it's alive. I actually had a friend of mine who, uh, he was a, uh, he worked at Parkland Hospital in Dallas and he was on the 13th floor and he worked in the morgue and he did autopsies on people. And one time he went and got a body out of this cooler and pulled it out and put it on this slab and he turned around to get some of his <laughs> instruments and when he turned back around, this body <laughs> had sat up. The guy was up, his eyes were open, his mouth were open and his arms were dangling at his side. And it scared him so much, he said he nearly jumped out of that 13th floor window, but he went running down the hall, got some people, and they came back, and they checked this guy over, and he was dead. But did you know that even after a person is dead, even if their soul and spirit has left their body, there, there still could be some twitches, some uh, muscles contracting, electrical impulses. They checked this guy. He was dead. They just pushed him back down and did the autopsy. But for a period of time, it looked like his body was still alive. It takes a while for the body to decay. So this is saying that when you get born again, your old man is crucified, but it left behind a body. You know what the body in this spiritual realm is? It's your unrenewed mind. It's the way you were programmed. It's the way you've been taught. All of us were born with a sin nature, and before you got born again, this sin nature had total dominance in your life. It taught you how to be selfish. It taught you how to hate. It taught you how to lust. It taught you all of these things, and it formed a body. I'm not talking now about a physical, tangible body, but it formed a way of thinking. And now that old nature that taught you and programmed you how to think and how to act, it's gone. It's dead. You don't have an old nature. Matter of fact, you've got a new nature that cannot sin. 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. 
and you are dead to sin. You've got a new nature, but you are going to continue to function the way that you think. If you don't th change the way that you think, you will continue to function under the tutelage of that old nature. Even though that old nature is gone, it left behind a way of thinking, and you will continue to function in selfishness and in lust and in fear and greed, and on and on you go, listing things until you renew yourself. But man, this is liberating to recognize that the part that made you sin, you were by nature a child of wrath, even as others, is what it says in Ephesians chapter 2. You, before you got born again, you really don't have any option. You can modify your behavior to a degree, and you may not go out and rape and plunder and do things, but in your heart you will commit these sins, and you, you will... Uh, manifest sin to some degree. You can modify your behavior to a degree, but that old sin nature compels you. It's the way that you are. It's your nature. You know, I'm always amused at these people that have these pets that they consider to be members of the family. And I can understand that. I've had dogs that I've loved. I actually had one dog that when he died, I cried. And my wife said, you didn't even cry over people in your church who died. And I said, well, people in my church didn't love me as much as this dog loved me. And so I can understand getting att att attached to an animal, but still, they're animals. And I've been over to people's house before that they, you know, you walk in and their little dog comes up and gets so excited, they wet on the tile or on the carpet. And the people would just apologize. Oh, I'm so sorry. I can't believe that they did that. And I've told people before, I said, look, that's just the dog in them coming out. And I know that there are some of you that think that, oh, no, my dog is not a dog anymore. It's a member of the family. But I guarantee you, if you leave that dog or if you leave that cat by itself inside of your house and you do it long enough, to where you aren't around to control and to monitor, you leave that animal by itself, it'll act like a dog or a cat. It'll wind up relieving itself wherever. I've had dogs come up and they always stick their nose in places that they shouldn't. And I've had the owner, oh, I'm so sorry. And I'm sorry, well, that's okay. It's the dog in them coming out. You may sit there and you can paint their toenails and you can put a ribbon in their hair and you can wash them and fluff their hair and you can do whatever you want to, but you know what? They got a dog nature. And if you leave them by themselves, they'll act like a dog. They'll act like a cat. I don't care what you think. They are a dog. They are a cat. They are not human. I don't care how much you get them to act human and to beg and to do things and you can teach them to roll over and you can do stuff, but they still are an animal. And see, some people, as long as you think that you are by nature a child of the devil, and you think that you still have that old sinful nature in you, you can do behavior modification, and you can go to church, and you can act right around certain things. But you know what? As long as you see yourself that way, you eventually will act it out. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. But when you see yourself that I'm not that person anymore, that's not me. Matter of fact, I was just talking to a man this last week who was a drug addict. He, he had sexual sins. He had everything. But man, when he got born again, he got hold of this truth. And he saw himself as a brand new person. And he even now says that that is not me. His jail record and stuff, some people were trying to remind him that he had been in prison, he had done these things, and he says, no, that wasn't me. <laughs> I'm a new person. That was an old man. That old man is gone. I heard uh, Kenneth Hagin one time talk about that if he ever had a natural talent, it was the ability to pick a lock. And so all of his friends, every time they wanted to break into some place and steal something, they all got Kenneth Hagin and uh, used him to pick a lock. But when he got born again, his friends came to him and wanted him to go pick a lock and they were going to steal something. And he says, I can't do it. It wasn't that he wouldn't do it. It was like, I can't do it. And they said, well, yes, you can. You've never seen a lock that you can't pick. And he said, no, that was not, that's the old me. He says, I'm a new person. And he saw himself in Christ to such a degree that he literally could not do the things 
that he did before. He couldn't do them now that he was born again because he saw himself completely changed. Would to God that every one of us would get hold of this revelation. So this is saying that you will be, you, you are already in the likeness of his death. You are died with Christ. You were crucified with Christ and you will manifest his resurrection if you know this, that that old man is gone. It is dead. It is crucified. You don't have an old man that is compelling you anymore. All you've got is a body of sin, the unrenewed mind that is left. And if you would begin to start taking the Word of God and renewing your mind, it would be like Romans 12, 2 says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You can begin to program yourself, reprogram yourself, and then you will not serve sin. So it's a three-step process. You got to be born again, and when that happens, your old man is dead. Then you got to get that unrenewed mind, this body that was left from that old man, and you got to reprogram it through the Word of God. And as you do that, well, then your actions will not serve sin anymore. I am not schizophrenic. I don't have a new nature and an old nature. I've got one new nature. And the only reason that I don't manifest it perfectly is because I'm still working on this brain. I'm still renewing my mind. But there are, it's now normal. It's natural for me to love people. I've had people that have hated me, that have done things to me, that have slandered me, and I just love those people, and I bless them and help them. It's become natural. I don't do it perfectly, but I've done it enough that I can tell you I have seen a change in my life. Let me just continue to read. In verse 7, it says, For he that is dead is freed from sin. Notice what it didn't say. It didn't say, He that is dead is free from sin. There's a difference in being freed, F-R-E-E-D, and free, F-R-E-E. Jesus has freed us, but that doesn't mean that we're all walking in that freedom. You know, when I first got started in ministry, when I was in Childress, Texas, I used to go to the jails and minister because people were staying away from my churches by the thousands. And so I didn't have much to do, so I'd go into nursing homes and jail. And I remember speaking to a prisoner one time, and I was talking through the jail cell. I was actually able to talk to him. He was in his cell, and I was there talking to him. And I said, if I had the ability to set you free and I just totally forgave you. And I said, you're, you're freed, F-R-E-E-D. I said, you, that wouldn't make you free unless you believed what I said, unless you got up off that bunk, unless you pushed the, the jail door open and unless you walked out. But if you were afraid that I was deceiving you or if you were afraid that I didn't have the authority or whatever, you could still be freed and yet be in prison and not experience that freedom. Did you know that that same thing has happened with us as believers? Jesus has freed us, that old sin nature that compelled us to be the person that we were is completely gone. It is no longer compelling us to live a certain way. The only reason that we still have a propensity for sin is because of an unrenewed mind. We don't see ourselves in the Spirit. We don't know who we are in the Spirit. We still identify and we say, well, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. No, I was an old sinner, but I got saved by grace, and now I am the righteousness of God, and for me to act contrary to who I am in the Spirit is hypocritical. If you don't understand the things I'm talking about, some of you will say, well, yeah, I know I'm supposed to now love everybody, and you may go through some of the motions, but in your heart you think, well, the truth is I just hate this person. Well, that's your old, that's that body of sin. That's that selfish mentality that you were taught, but in your born-again spirit. No, you love them the way that Christ loved the very people who were crucifying him. And he turned around and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Your spirit is full of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. That's the way that you are in the spirit. That is your new nature. 
And if you aren't experiencing those things, it's because you don't understand who you are in the Spirit. You haven't changed your identity. You are still identifying based on that body of sin that has left this unrenewed mind that it was taught wrong, and you think that that's the real you. Man, I'm trying everything I can to tell you that that is not the real you. If you are dead with Christ, this is talking about if you are born again, and when you get born again, you die to that old sin nature, it says if you are dead with Him, you are freed from sin. So you've been freed. Now walk free. And the way you do that is by the renewing of your mind. He goes on to say in verse 8, Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him. And here again in verse 9, knowing this. See back in verse 6, for you to walk in the likeness of His resurrection, you had to know this, that your old man is crucified, that the body of sin might be destroyed. Now it's talking about that we are dead with Christ. We believe that we shall live with Him knowing this, that Christ being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Jesus died unto sin once. You only die to that old sinful nature one time. You do not resurrect your old nature every day and then have to die to it over and over again. You have to constantly renew your mind and constantly remember that you are dead to sin, but you don't have that sin nature resurrect. That sin nature is dead. It is gone. It is non-existence. The old you doesn't exist anymore except in your mind. Your nature has been changed. In the same way that Christ died unto sin, he did it once, but now he lives unto God. And then in verse 11, it says, likewise, that means in the same way that Jesus did this, this is how you're supposed to do it. Reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Likewise, likewise what? The same way that Jesus did it. Jesus died unto sin one time, but now he lives unto God. Therefore you die unto sin one time when you get born again, and the rest of the Christian life is just a renewing of your mind. I tell you, when I got hold of these truths, it radically changed my life because I no longer kept identifying with sin, with defeat, with failure, with the devil, with the old me. I was an introvert. I was just, hey, I had so many problems. I began to recognize that old me is gone and that I'm a new creature and I started identifying with who I am and now I'm an extrovert to the max. I'm ministering to millions and mil billions of people all around the world. I'm doing things that the old me couldn't do because that old me is gone and I renewed my mind and now I'm walking in resurrection power and able to see a change. Philippians 4.19 says, But my God shall supply all of your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Did you know we often take that verse out of context, but it starts with a conjunction, the word but, but my God. That links it to what was said before. And if you take all of this in context, did you know God, Paul was speaking to his partners in just the previous verses in front of this, he says, Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I had departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again to my necessity. These were people who were partners with him. And so this promise about having God supply all of your need is a promise to partners. And what I want to do today is just ask you, to pray about becoming a partner with our ministry. There are millions of people, I don't know how many, but hundreds of millions of people can see this program, and yet many people have been touched, have been blessed, and have never partnered with us. We couldn't do that if there wasn't some people that partnered with us. I would like to ask you to become one of those, and we are in the process of building out our Karis Bible College campus. It's going to be multiple hundreds of millions of dollars 
to build out this 500 acre campus. So if you've been blessed by this program, go to awmi.net slash campus and we have a flyover and a video that will show you the whole campus, what we've got planned. It'll go inside the buildings. We have more people wanting to come than what we can accommodate. So check it out, awmi.net slash campus and become a foundation builder today. Before I came to Karis, I was a mess. I didn't know my purpose, and I didn't even really know who God was. But when I came to Karis, I learned who I am in Christ. I learned identity. I learned to have a relationship with God, and I met Christ. And then it was after first and second year getting a foundation. It was in third year that I discovered my purpose. I discovered my destiny and I walk in my call every day now. I walk in relationship with God daily and my life is not the same. There's no going back. So come to Karis, discover your purpose, find your destiny and walk in your calling. For more information about Karis Bible College Canada, visit our website at karisbiblecollege.ca. I'd like to let all of you, our Canadian viewers, know that we have a Bible college in Toronto, and we would love to have you come and be a part of it. There's multiple ways you can take advantage, not only through the campus there in Toronto, but we have online courses, we have correspondence courses, uh, just a number of ways, but we want to help you and we're making it as available to you as we possibly can. So check it out with the information's on your screen, our Karis Bible College, Toronto. To learn more about the vision and mission of Andrew Womack Ministries Canada, be sure to visit our website at awmc.ca. While there, you'll also find details about all of the products available and be able to access many of Andrew's teachings absolutely free. You can listen to them while you're online or download them for later and listen on the go. Remember, that's awmc.ca. The moment you believe your healing is done and it's just a matter of time until whatever the symptoms are, are gone. You observe what Jesus did and try in your mind and say, I'm making a judgment that Jesus paid the price for me. We focus on what the doctors can do for us more than what God can do for us. Say, God is my healer, not the doctor. Andrew is offering his book, Spirit, Soul, and Body, as his free gift to you today. This book is available in English or Spanish and is limited to one free book per household. This offer is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free book. Go to our website at awmc.ca and click on today's TV offer under the store tab to see all the ways you can get these products or you can call the Andrew Womack Ministries Canada helpline Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time at 647-348-2220 to order.